dear friends uh, if you want to select a solar pump for agricultural application uh, the most vital aspect is to understand the terms which are used in pump selection so the objective here in this lecture is to show you the pump curves to show you the system curves to explain the various terms which go into the selection of the pumps for example if you are selecting a pump which has to be used for drawing water from a well an open well in your agricultural field or you want to select a pump which is to be drawing water from a bore well for your agricultural application then we must have an idea of what exactly are the terms associated with the pumps so i am not going to go into the constructional aspect of the pumps i would be going to the design aspect of the pump that has to be very clear so in this lecture we would be looking into the different terms like head flow the head terms we would be segregating into static head and dynamic head we would be looking into what is a pump efficiency and how does a pump curve and system curve differ so let us start with the discussion this diagram which is in front of you shows you a particular type of pump in our earlier discussion we talked about a surface pump and a submersible pump so surface pump is used in cases where the water bodies are shallow and we need not immerse that pump in the water body in the submersible pump as the name goes the pump is submerged inside the water body so as you see over here you would find that this pump the submersible pump is being submerged in the water body and this pump would draw the water from a particular level from that well and it would pump the water in an overhead water tank what i mean is the water tank which is on the ground in that case for the selection of the pump we need to be comfortable with this terms like what is a static head or static height what is a vertical lift or static lift and what are the frictional losses you must understand that the submersible pump would be submerged in the water and the well depth the depth of the well would be different from the ground if you measure the depth of the well from the ground that would be different from the level of the water from the ground so water level would always be higher than the bottom of the well assuming that there is water in the well Okay. so we need to be uh, taking the level of the water what is the level of the water in the bore well or in the open well uh, as a as a static for calculating the static water level so as you see in this diagram uh, the static water level is measured from the level of the water which is in the well up to the surface of the Uh, ground up to the surface of the ground. Okay, so that is a suction uh, static height or suction static head. Okay, so what is suction static head? Or it is the level. If you uh, put a tap, measuring tap, uh, such that it dips the uh, just dips the water and up to the ground. That level, that level which you measure in meters or you can measure it in foot, uh, feet, uh, feet. Okay, whatever units of paper. that would be the suction static height okay so, um, then uh, in this diagram i have written it as a pumping level okay you can call it as a pumping level also or suction static height then uh, the tank which is above okay, it would have certain outlet so you see over here that there is a outlet which is on the top of the tank right and that outlet height that outlet's height the outlet of the water which would be pumped by the pump uh, from the ground that height is called as a vertical lift or static lift okay so we need to be clear that if you want to 
if you want to measure this, we can simply put a tap, measuring tap, up to the uh, height where we need to lift the water. Okay, so that would be the static lift or vertical lift. It's very simple. Uh, both the static lift, that is the vertical lift, and the suction static height can be measured physically. Okay, when you plan to install a pump for uh, irrigation applications or for any other applications for that matter. Then we need to calculate the frictional losses in pipings. Uh, how do you do those calculations or what are the thumb rules that we will be discussing when we discuss uh, the proper case study. Okay, so for the present purpose, just remember that there is something called as total dynamic head and that total dynamic head is the basis for selecting the pump. Okay. And this total dynamic head, it comprises of the static lift or it's also known as vertical lift. Then it comprises of the static height or a pumping level and it comprises or it also includes the frictional losses in the pipings. Okay, so there would be piping right from the bottom of the well up to the tank. Okay, so that entire piping could go into the, uh, it would be associated with certain frictional losses. And uh, if we know friction losses per feet or per uh, meter, then we can calculate the friction, total frictional loss by knowing the dimensions of the piping. So we need to measure the uh, dimensions of the piping which has to be laid for drawing the water from the well. Okay, so these are the essential things we need to know from the system point of view. Okay, by system I mean the uh, uh, place where you are planned to irrigate means the place where you are drawing the water from the well up to the storage tank or water tank. Okay. Uh, uh, just to make you understand, I have taken some. Uh, some figures uh, so that the things would be clear as to what who is this total dynamic head. For example, uh, let us say that your uh, tank, uh, the tank is uh, at a height of uh, 71 feet from the ground. Uh, by tank, I mean the outlet of the uh, water in the tank. Okay, so the water would enter the tank. Okay, so that outlet uh, from the pump, which is located in the tank, that uh, from the ground is 71 feet. Okay, so that gives us the static lift or vertical lift. Uh, let us say that the water level from the ground, if you measure the water level from the ground, that is about 35 feet. Okay, so if you put a tape inside that well and uh, wherever the tape touches the water level, that height if you measure, that is a suction static height, let us say that was 35 feet from the ground level obviously. And let us say that the well which we have dug, it is of 170 feet. Okay, 170 feet. So how now? How do you calculate the total dynamic head? So we need to sum up the total length of the piping. Okay, and that multiplied by the friction loss in the piping per 100 feet uh, would give you the total frictional loss. Okay, that would give you the total frictional loss. So for example, in this uh, uh, example, I have considered that. The pipings are of the material such that it would give about three feet of loss per 100 feet of the dimension of the pipe, okay, uh, of the length of the pipe. Uh, so that has to, so the well depth has to be uh, used in that calculation, okay. So 170 feet, uh, then you have the vertical lift, so that would help you calculate the pipe length and the frictional loss per unit. 100 feet or whatever that would help you calculate the total frictional loss. Uh, then uh, we have given, uh, you have been given the information about the vertical lift and you have been given the information of the water level height. So that would give you the pumping level plus vertical lift plus frictional loss. That summation would be the total dynamic head. So if you take it in feet, it would be in feet. If you take it in meters of water column, you would get in meters of water column. So water units you uh, follow in your country okay uh, that was about the system uh, characteristics the, the discussion which we had this discussion uh, in uh, in our terms in scientific terms is known as system characteristics okay uh, now we need to go for a pump selection now when you go for a pump selection we need to look at the pump characteristics and how 
what is the pump characteristics so in pump characteristics basically yeah, it could be expressed either in the form of a table or it could be expressed in the form of a curve as seen over here and it would have certain terms on it so what are the terms which you would find on the pump curve on the pump curve uh, you would find a term called as head then there is a term called as flow rate then there is a term called as efficiency lines and then there is a term called as the brake horsepower or simply horsepower okay so as uh, seen in front of you you would see that the pump curve is uh, beautifully depicted over here and whenever you look for any pump selection you need you would be offered the pump curve okay and from that pump curve you should be in a position to select an appropriate pump now how do you do that so for that first let's try to understand what is head flow rate efficiency or power so head is basically uh, whatever we talked about uh, in terms of the uh, pressure differential through which the water has to be lifted okay uh, this pressure differential uh, through which the water has to be lifted because what is basically a pump pump what it does pump basically lifts the water okay by overcoming the resistances which it encounters so head is the total resistance which the pump encounters and which it can overcome okay so that head can be expressed in the terms of pressure in terms of bar uh, in terms of uh, psi uh, pound square inch it could be expressed either in feet of water column or meter of water column whatever units uh, you are following uh, basically head is the resistance which has to be overcome so that the water is lifted up to a particular height from the valve okay flow rate you understand is the capacity of the pump uh, to deliver water per unit time okay so how much liters of water or how much gallons of water per minute this pump is going to deliver okay so that gives you the flow rate so flow rate is the volume flow rate it is a volume flow rate that is how much water the pump is going to deliver per unit time and efficiency is basically how much is the output of the pump upon the input uh, of the pump output is uh, the hydraulic output of the pump okay so even if you don't understand just uh, from a uh, from a common sensical view you can understand it is it is how best the pump is in performing its function of delivering the particular water from uh, from the baseline okay and uh, with how much energy input so better is the efficiency of the pump less would be the electricity consumed by the pump okay uh, or in terms of solar pumps better is the efficiency of the pump less would be the uh, number of solar panels which we need to be in installing so when you talked about the pumps yes, in the last lecture where we talked about the dc pumps and ac pumps we said that the dc pumps are more efficient and the ac pumps are less efficient okay so when you say less efficient you would require more solar panels if you are talking about solar pumps and if you are talking about more efficient you would require more uh, uh, less solar panels for performing the same operation that is for overcoming the same head and the same flow rate okay uh, if you look at the pump curves you will find that uh, the as you increase the Uh, flow rate the head capacity curve goes on drooping so it's a drooping curve okay uh, as you increase uh, the flow rate the head capacity curve drops okay so at at zero head you will get maximum flow rate and at zero flow rate you get maximum head that is how the uh, hq curves h means for head and q is for flow rate that is how the uh, hq curve looks like okay uh, for zero q maximum head for zero h maximum q and in between you would find that as the q increases that as the flow rate increases the head would start decreasing okay so it means that a particular pump can provide you a combination of head and flow rate so a pump a given pump can supply different flow rates if you go if it is used under different heads under different pressures Uh, in layman's language if you want to uh, if you select a pump and if you want to deliver water at a lower height then it could give you more flow rate as compared to a case where it has to deliver a water at a higher height okay that is the meaning of hq curve okay 
find you would find that the efficiency of the curve that is not constant over the hq characteristics so the efficiency would be maximum at certain head and certain flow rate at the certain head and certain flow rate if the efficiency is maximum that head and that flow rate is called as bpp so whatever it is written as bp is known as best efficiency point of the pump okay so ideally speaking we need to operate the pump at the given at the best efficiency point that is when the pump is going to give you uh, that flow rate at that head okay but in practical life you would find that the pump has to operate under a particular uh, band of head and a particular band of flow rate so for that uh, we need to choose a pump uh, whose operating range is closer to the uh, best efficiency point so the blue band which is shown on this curve is the recommended operating range what is the meaning of recommended operating range the meaning of recommended operating range is that uh, your operating point which is the which is the intersection of the system curve and the pump curve that would be in this region and when it is in this region then your operation of the pumping system is efficient okay so this is the importance so while selecting the pump we need to always select the a uh, region where the pump is going to operate in this recommended operating range now how do you get that region for that we need to look at this um, uh, system curve versus pump curve plot so uh, we talked about the system curve system curve is what system curve is basically the uh, head which has to be overcome by the pump and how is it calculated we said we talked about the installation of the pump in the field the height of the water tank the height of the water the depth of the water beneath the ground and the frictional losses in the piping so that would give you the system curve and the pump curve is a uh, pump curve would be the characteristic of the pump you select okay so different pumps would have different pump curves and that intersection of the pump curve and the system curve is the operating point so you need to select the pump which because the system curve is not in your hand the okay? system curve is decided by the application that is what is the water available in your field okay and what is the height of the water you need to raise it okay so system curve is not in our hand but but uh, uh, the pump curve and system curve characteristics uh, is optimal when you choose a right pump or you use a variable frequency drive or a controller okay so in the next uh, lecture i would be talking about the role of vfds that is variable frequency drive and the role of controller such that you always have an operation of the pump in the best operating region and what is the best operating region we talked about we talked about this region wherein uh, we uh, we talked about the region wherein we get the best efficiency okay uh, so let us stop over here and uh, let us discuss the uh, controller in the next class thank you very much